This video is going to help you get started with Activity 5.5a CAD Model Features Part 1. So there's, this is a two-part activity that includes all Inventor modeling and utilizing different modeling features, mainly in the 3D side of Inventor, and to go through on how to create those. So there's two documents you will need from this. You'll need the actual activity document, and you'll actually need the Automoblox T9 dimension drawings that show up as well. So when I take a look, Here's my CAD model features activity document, and as I scroll down, I'll see that they have very similar to like in 5.2b, we went through and had some dimensions applied with a, an object that we're going to go through and model, and these are going to be where I go through and get the dimensions from. So on this one, they actually kind of go through and provide you a little hint on how to create the sketch to make this particular part, but I'm going to go through and walk you through it as well. So for this one, we're going to be creating a rubber handle that gets used for as a part of a button maker assembly and we'll go through and take a look at what kinds of uh, features we'll use in order to make that. So first thing we'll want to do is we'll want to create a new part in Inventor and we'll go through and start a brand new sketch to do that. One thing that I'll probably do is there is a new feature that we haven't covered yet which is looking at creating a center line. So I'm going to choose the line tool and starting from the origin I'm just going to draw a line out and a pretty good amount. So even if it was like two inches or anything like that, that wouldn't be such a big issue. So it really, we're not too concerned with the length of it. But you'll notice there's a purple line that shows up right along the x-axis within Inventor's sketch plane. I'm going to right click on it and say center line to make it a center line. And what will happen is, is it becomes a series of center lines just like what we used in dimensioning from first semester and the center lines are going to help us with creating the sketch. So as far as to create the actual part, I'm going to use the line tool again. I'm going to go ahead and use the y-axis to help kind of constrain my geometry a bit. And I'm going to draw the following shape onto my sketch plane, making sure that I do have straight lines and making sure all the parts connect to each other as well. So one of the things we'll also take a look at is you know, they do give us a couple dimensions and then they leave a few blank that we're going to have to go through and interpret from the print drawing. So 4.469 is going to be our uh, length of our particular part. So I can dimension from the edge to end. 4.469. If I zoom out a little bit, my, um, my, line, my lines will go through and everything will expand a little bit. And the other dimension that I have to go through and apply is 0.156 on the very end. So I'll just click on the very end, 0.156, and that will go through and help kind of set up our particular dimension. As I take a look, a couple of the dimensions I'm looking for is like, so here they have a construction line. They use a construction line, but I go through and utilize a center line because within this print they go through and show that there is a diameter of 0.1875 so from the from the uh, construction line or the center line they have drawn here in the print down to the edge of where we have so I'm going to click on the center line and click down on this line here and if you'll notice it extends out and I'm going to kind of drag my dimension a little bit below where the axis line is being represented so it's easier to see but I can go through and do a 0.1875 and it will go through and it will dimension. Now it will only go out to three decimal places but our dimension is accurate then for going through and having that. So this is representing that that means when this, the other side of the part gets generated, it will go through and start from this point representing our hole. Another part we'll take a look at is um, the outside diameter. So you'll see this has a diameter of 1.375 OD and that stands for outside diameter. So from the center line to the very outside edge of my part I'm going to create another one of 1.375 and then the only thing that I have left to do is to take a look at well, what's the thickness of the part. Well the thickness of this part you can see by these lines these are called section lines that go through and indicate that this has been cut away to show the inside of the part. So we get a dimension of 0.25 to go through and to represent the thickness of the walls of our of our uh, rubber handle. Okay, after I have that, there's only a couple things that we'll go through and and take a look at as well. Is you'll notice it has radius of 0.25 TYP, and what TYP stands for is typical. So that means any place that you see around 
along the outside edges, that one's going to have a radius of 0.25. So it keeps you from having to reproduce and copy a bunch of dimensions onto the drawing. So that means we're going to have one here and we're going to have one here. So we'll go through and let's apply that in the 2D sketch. So I'm going to set our fillet to be 0.25. I'll choose the bottom round here and then I'll also have one on the very end as well. So to go through and represent our particular part. So and again we're just kind of looking at if our profile was look I've got a round on the end here and I got a round right there it stays fairly square as it go around on the inside edges and this is kind of what I'm double checking to make sure. I can close my 2D fillet tool I'll say finish sketch and with this I'm going to go through and I'm going to use a new tool called rather than extrude I'm going to use revolve so Revolve goes through and uses a profile, and it will automatically pick up my profile. But it goes through and revolves it around an axis that's going through and being defined. And so luckily, we go through within the Revolve, they, it picks up our center line as the axis, and goes through and revolves the shape and makes a solid around the axis there. So you can kind of go through and see how that is. We're going to go to a full. You can either go full, you can go between an angle, 90 degrees, you could always go through and just put in however much you wanted, so I could always change from 90 to 180, or any of those, any angle degree between there, but we're going to go through and do a full uh, revolve, and it's just kind of a neat feature to look at and to use. I'll click OK, and then there becomes my rubber handle for my particular part, so you can kind of go through and see how it's smaller, it's got a small hole on the end, and I guess it has a larger one on the other side, and that's what we were going through in dimensioning as we did that. So this sleeve would fit over the, a metal handle that would be used to create uh, parts for buttons. So the only thing we have left is to change the material. So from generic, I'm going to go ahead and choose rubber. It'll change the appearance of it as well as changing some of the physical properties within the menu in order to go through and do that. So after you have this done, make sure you save this into your Activity 5.5 folder as a rubber handle.